Yeah, we, very small amount we talked about it, yeah. We're going to talk more about it now. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Same. Same word, yeah. Yeah, fission and fusion, yeah. of what fission is. So what you have is, you have something like uranium-235, okay, and then you fire a neutron at it, and this splits into two smaller isotopes. Um, krypton and barium, and three neutrons come out. And what you notice is, this mass plus this mass plus this mass plus this mass plus this mass is smaller than this mass of these two so the result is there's some energy released okay and before i give you the definition i think it's a good idea to draw this picture as an, a picture of what fission is you see yeah. Yeah. So, fission, if you were to put it in words, nuclear fission is a nuclear process, fair enough. It's when an atom splits apart into smaller atoms. The process gives off a lot of energy and is used in nuclear weapons and nuclear reactors. So, uh, oops, sorry. So the key, wait, wait, the key sentence is when an atom splits apart into smaller atoms, this gives off a lot of energy. That's the key idea. Okay, now you can write it down.
you notice in this picture, Some vocabulary here. When you have an atom, an isotope, and you fire one neutron at it, you know that sorry, it breaks and releases energy. It also releases more neutrons. So what you can do is you can have these neutrons that come out, they can break open more isotopes. And then when this opens, they can break open more isotopes. So it's like a process of... Um, do you know what dominoes are? Do you know what dominoes? You put them on the table yeah. and you flick it and they go... They all fall down. You know these? This game? You have this in China? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of the same idea here. One isotope opens and then it hits another isotope and they open. It spreads out like this. Um, so the vocabulary here is this is the first generation, second, third, fourth, etc. Okay, can you draw this now? <coughs> it, it, it is a um, uh, spring, uh, spring. In this picture, there's only two, I know. Should be three. Khalifa, why are you late? Ah, Khalifa, no, 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 why are you late so late? No, 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 no. Down to Neil you go. Off to Neil. You know you've only been on time one morning for me in the last week. Do you know which morning that was? Hey. No, it was Monday last week. You were uh, nice and early. Generation is uh, depends on which one. Looks, yeah, yeah. Mm. Ah, look how beautiful that is. So it must be your name. Must be what? Uh, your name. No, 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 no. It can be any, any t uh, uranium, um, plutonium, mm -hmm. anything unstable. So uh, is the say is new nuclear? Yeah. The small one. Hmm. Which one? Small one. Neutron. A neutron. Yeah, this is a neutron. Yeah. Yes? Are you sure? Continue? Okay. So, this is called the chain reaction. The idea is this. Yeah, do you want to? Yeah, chain reaction. Yeah. So, a chain reaction is a nuclear reaction in which a heavy isotope such as uranium. So, Gail, yeah, you're asking me, does it have to be uranium? So it can be uranium or plutonium, for example, splits and the neutrons released strike and split other heavy atoms, which as a result hit other one after another. 
chain reactions are the main way of getting nuclear energy. So I'm just describing in words what happens here. Oops, sorry. Uh, so you have uranium and you have the neutron fires in and uh, uranium becomes, uh, what's it, uh, krypton and barium and uh, maybe some more neutrons are released and these neutrons can hit into more uranium and the process continues. Each time you get some energy. So here you get E and here you get uh, E, well, afterwards you get E and then afterwards you get E, E and E. So can you see one neutron can make one E, then three E, then nine E. You see how quickly it uh, increases? 27 E. So this is called a chain reaction. Now before I continue, do you know this word chain? You do? Good, what is it? Uh, is it is something coming out and coming out? Very good, yeah. Like on your bicycle. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you have a bicycle chain. Yeah, yeah. So this, this is a, a chain because like you said, Ben, these connect. Yeah, good, very good, okay. Now, write this down. Um, so, every time when the uh, neutrons leads, they go into another uranium. I, I thought they were going to uh, the isotope they sleep to. Like, you say the like BR or the KR or yeah. B. Yeah, so, like, uh, it's like, here's the uranium. The neutron comes into it and splits this into barium and krypton and then three neutrons come out uh, and those three neutrons hit more uranium okay so energy are the same each energy time. each time each, each one would be the same but you can see it adds together so you have three of them now and then nine and then 27 so uh, it very quickly gets very big Do you have um, nuclear power in China? I think so, right? Mm. You have? Yeah.
cappuccino? Americano. Oh yeah, you drink Americano. I forgot. You drink disgusting Starbucks Americano. <laughs> I don't like Starbucks, but that's kind of cheap if you compare with outside. The Starbucks in the cafe in it's here. O- it's okay. It's okay. The cheapest and best is the mosque. Mosque? Mm. Uh, you know the mosque where the students go to pray? Oh, yeah. oh I took you there, didn't I? No, I didn't. Ah, you remember okay. the mosque? Yeah. Where the students go to pray? Oh, I know the mosque. Yeah, just like one minute down the road. They have a cafe there. Mm-hmm. They open at 11 o'clock. They have really, really good coffee. Only two euros. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Cake, also really good. Food, okay. also good. But the food, a little spicy. Spicy? A little spicy, yeah. Oh, no, maybe for you. No problem. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. You should try it sometime. Yeah. I Let's say go, go there. Yeah. Anybody can go. So they have their building where they pray, and then beside it, it's a little cafe. Oh. You know, you can get chicken burger or curry or chips or whatever. I go there because it's cheap. <laughs> and it's good good food you know my favorite is a cake and coffee uh, like 450 mm, okay nice. but they do like rice and curry six euros it's delicious though it's mm-hmm. delicious I brought the delicious. Turkish coffee back I really like this you like the Turkish coffee? Yeah, they're like kind of small pot. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's strong. Yeah, but it tastes, uh, tastes really, smell really nice, you know, they into your nose. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. I don't think I've tried Turkish coffee. I bought a pot. You bought the pot to make yeah. it nice, nice. Now, will this process always happen? So, not always. Let me, let me show you. So, if you look here, Let's say here, 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 some, u- oops, some uranium. So I'm going to fire my neutron and then three neutrons come out and the process goes on. Great. Okay, well what about like this? I have uranium and then one here and one here. I fire my neutron in. Maybe, maybe only one of them hits, or something like this, you know. In this picture, I don't have enough uranium, mm. so the process can't continue. Mm. So critical mass is the mass required so that the chain reaction can take place. If you don't have enough uranium, the chain reaction won't happen. You understand? So you have two situations. If the mass is less than the critical mass, there's not enough freed neutrons to continue the process. But if the mass is more than the critical mass, then there are enough freed neutrons and you can get your chain reaction. So critical mass is the minimum mass you need to have a chain reaction. Do you understand the idea? The minimum mass you need, yeah. It's a, it's a minimum. You look confused. I, I, I didn't know the neutrons have direction. I think they just anyway. go, go into... I don't know, Gal. Um, maybe it's anyway, or maybe they do have a direction. Mm. I'm not sure. Mm. I, I, I thought if they have to learn, then they just directly to go into the... I'm not sure of the details exactly. Okay. Did you find me? Yeah.
Kiddoki. <coughs> Sick? No. I smoked too much. How much this morning? It's very late. Three. I just, I just woke Three up before late. school. Wow, that is too much. Yeah, I just woke up about an hour. <laughs> Alright. Which part are you writing down, Khalifa? The first or the second box? The second box. Second box, okay. Chernobyl. But I never seen it. But I didn't hear it's uh, very good. Yes, I heard it's very good too. I might watch it. Do you learn about Chernobyl in school? But you knew about Chernobyl before the movie? No. Really? This is true. You don't know Chernobyl? It's a nuclear accident in the 1980s in the nuclear power plant in Chernobyl. Is, is, is that show on Netflix? I think, it, I think it might be, yeah. I think so, it's yeah. Famous for recently. Yeah, it's famous recently. Yeah. 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 Russia aren't happy with it. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't want it, but I didn't get time to watch it. Ah. Yeah, maybe it's worth watching. We'll, uh, we'll talk about Chernobyl a little bit later, actually. Uh, Chernobyl isn't the only nuclear accident. There's been other accidents as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, but was that to have it in Japan? Was that nuclear? That was nuclear as well. Uh, that was caused by the uh, tsunami, yeah, by the, the weather. Yeah. Natural, you know. Whereas in Chernobyl, it was uh, man-made, mm. human error. <laughs> now, so we're talking about nuclear energy, uh, nuclear power, and Chernobyl. So we have to look at exactly what is the way you can make energy from nuclear materials like uranium or plutonium. So this is the nuclear reactor. Now, I'll explain how it works. It's, it's, not, it's not too difficult. So what you have here is, you see these red bars? Yeah? That's what's called uranium fuel element. So really, these red bars, they're uranium. And the uranium is undergoing a chain reaction. So it's releasing lots of energy. And the form of energy it releases is heat. So all this heat energy is coming out, okay? Now, this gets really, really hot, and it's inside this sodium or liquid water. So this sodium gets really, really hot. And the sodium passes through into this tank of water, and this water makes steam, and this steam turns a, a, a generator to make electricity. Now remember we did this in fields. Uh, remember the um, AC generator? Remember the AC generator? Yeah? So you use your left hand to figure out the current. So this makes uh, electricity. Then what happens is the steam cools down back into water. So you get water here, and then the water goes back in and it begins the process again. Now, how do you make the water cold? Sorry, how do you make the steam cold? Well, you put cold water in this pipe, and when the steam hits this pipe, the steam cools back down. But what happens to this cold water? It becomes warm water. So, if you live near a nuclear power plant, do any of you live near a nuclear power plant? No? 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 
you get free hot water. Because the hot water that comes out here, they just give it out to the homes nearby. True. Yeah, true. There's nothing to inspect. Huh? There's nothing in fact to live near just... Well, I suppose, yeah, people don't want to live near one. But if you do, you get free warm water. <laughs> it's okay. That's not bad. So what's that uh, green bar? Here? Mm. Yeah, I was just about to say, so these are called the control rods. So the way they work is like this. These get very hot and they release neutrons. And when they release neutrons, they hit more uranium and release more neutrons. If this gets too hot, what you do is you push these control rods down and they block the neutrons. So they're made of some material like uh, boron, I think, and uh, it, it absorbs the neutrons to slow the chain reaction. So if you want lots of energy, you lift this up, you want less energy, you drop this. You see, so you just it, it drop it down and the neutrons hit the control rod. You need more energy, you lift it up and they start to hit again. What happened in Chernobyl? This is what happened. This control rod, uh, it has, um, I don't know what it is, like some connection here and it moves up and down. Like maybe like rubber, I'm not sure really, some material like this. And what happened in Chernobyl is the rubber, uh, it melted, and it melted and it stuck to the control rod, so you couldn't push it down. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you can't push it down? Well, this will just get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. This is a problem because if it gets too hot. So what they do, um, if this gets too hot, what do you think they can do in an emergency? So what's, what's the last thing you can do to try and stop this getting too hot if these control rods get stuck? Yeah, but from like where? What do you, what do, you do? Do you have the right idea? Water from water in bus? bus? Yes, yeah, yeah. So what you can do is, there's usually some like hole here and this is connected to the river or to the ocean, something like this. So uh, in an emergency, what you can do is you can open this hole and let the ocean water in and then the ocean water can come out. So you just let lots of water go in. You try to cool this down. Then it's going to be somebody's job to swim in here. I'm not joking. To swim in here and then try to uh, fix this. You know, so I think you see that in the Chernobyl show or movie uh, on Netflix. You said, mm -hmm. I think they show you the person who's swimming. You know, their job trying to fix it when you fill this up with water. Okay, um, this is this is the weakest part of the system. This is where something could go wrong. Is this part here? It's the weakest part of the system. So there was another accident, I think, in America, I think, Long Island, perhaps. Uh, and this, I think the same thing happened. The control rod got jammed. Um, so maybe they fixed it now. Maybe it's OK. I think the new power plants are much safer than the old power plants, you know, from like 1980s. So I don't think you have to worry about this anymore. Now. I don't know actually. I don't know. Uh, if you go to Google and type in nuclear accident and then try to spell Chernobyl, I'm sure it'll, it'll fix it. Let's see. Nuclear accident. Yep. And then start. No, start. And then start typing uh, space Chernobyl. C. No! Oh, you spelled accident wrong. Back. Oh. A C C I. D A C C I. Yeah. C. This one? Yeah, That's yeah. it, Chernobyl, yeah. 
Yeah, this one's very famous, right? Yep, famous one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, in the exam, they won't ask you all of this, but they will ask you a part of it. So, for example, they might say, explain the job of the control rods. Explain how the fuel works. Explain the need for uh, a water supply. Explain the need for sodium. Why do you need the sodium in here? Why do you need the sodium in here? Um, well, the purpose of the sodium is to transfer the heat into the water. You know? So it's a way to take the heat from the rods into here, into the water, and then back. That's the, that's the reason you need sodium. Why do you need a pump? You need the pump to push the fresh cold water into the bottom, mm -hmm. and then the steam comes out the top. Yeah? Um, what else do you need? Why do you need a condenser? This is called a condenser. Cool the steam. Correct, to cool the steam down back into water, so the process can begin again. Mm -hmm. Why do you need a turbine? Well, you want to make electricity from the steam. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So, they won't ask you to draw all of this, but they do ask you to explain parts of it. Like, for example, they could say, what is inside the reactor? This is, uh, sorry, this is the reactor, reactor core. So what's inside the reactor? Three things. The control rods, the uranium fuel rods, and the, so uh, the sodium. So, I know it's not easy, but if you can do your best to draw this, I know oh, it's not. So, so the orange mm -hmm. one is sodium. sodium. Yeah. Or it, it doesn't something uh, like water. It's it's like water. It cools. It takes the heat out. It can. It couldn't like flow. Like water. I think it flows like water. It's liquid or. It's liquid. Oh. It's liquid. And also, it doesn't say it on the picture, but these here are pumps. So the sodium, liquid sodium, gets pumped back in. Yeah, it's a liquid. Yeah. So this pump pushes the sodium around. Yeah. What's confusing you? Oh, okay. Uh, ben, Ben, uh, you need the pump to make the sodium go around because what will happen is the sodium, when it gets hot, it will just want to go up. So you need the pump to try and make it go around in a circle here. Yep, mountain sodium, correct.
Bloop. Bloop rule. Remember this word from electricity? Kirchhoff. Like Kirchhoff, yeah. <coughs> Bloop. <coughs> ah, you know this word. Look it up in your dictionary. You know this word. <coughs> Go on, look it up. You know this word? Uh, one second. Circle? No. Ah, oh, yeah, I like a circle. Kirchhoff's loop rule, Kirchhoff's junction rule. Remember these words? Okay. <laughs> uh, so, the quarter and warm water, mm -hmm. I think it's the also is a loop. Yeah, you can call this a loop, but really, really it's more called a coil. C O I L. C O I L, coil. You know this word? Okay, dictionary. C O I L. Where the heck is summer? <laughs> okay. Yeah? I think that this, this word is the same. <laughs> Ah, yeah, nice. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Gail was the only one who drew a big diagram. I think. Okay. Wow. Wow. I think you have the smallest diagram. Got that, Ben? Okay. Now on to some definitions. So the first one is nuclear fuel is a material that can be burned by fission or fusion to make nuclear energy. The most common is uranium and plutonium. What word are you checking, Ben? Uh, oh. Which word? Okay. No, which word are you checking? Actions of no, I don't think you need no, I don't think you need that. Uh, I don't think so. Hang on, let me just check something. Yeah, no, you don't need that. I'll just give you half the definition. Okay, so all I need you to write is that much. Nuclear fuel. What is it? It's a material that can be used to make nuclear energy. 
Most commonly, it's uh, uranium and plutonium. Derive. Make. Yeah. Continue. Right. In nuclear engineering, a moderator is a material, a medium, a material that reduces the speed of neutrons. So, wait, 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 let me just explain. Remember I said you have your uranium, and the uranium releases uh, neutrons, and the neutrons can release more energy by hitting more uranium. Mm -hmm. If you want to slow that process down, you use a moderator. Our control rod is the mechanism for moving up and down. The material is a moderator, so a moderating material. Uh, I think example is maybe like carbon or boron, if you put carbon or boron in your uranium, you make the neutrons move slower. So a moderator is like, um, uh, do you know um, this in English? Speed bump. Do you know speed bump? Uh. So you have your car. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have to go slow because yeah. of the speed bump. So the moderator is like a speed bump. It slows the neutrons. Okay. All right. There you go. Lots of English today, yeah? <coughs> Really, yeah, it is just boiling water, yeah. Boiling water using uranium.
Yeah? Okay. Next is the control rod. So control rods are used to control the rate of fission of the uranium and plutonium. It's different. Yeah, so the it's very, very similar, Ben. The moderator is just like a material, whereas the control rod is the machine that moves up and down with the materials. It's not much different. And the control rods are made of chemicals such as boron, silver, you know, uh, and they're capable of absorbing many neutrons. So it's really similar to the moderator. Like it's really the same thing, it's not much of a difference. Uh, the only difference is with the control rods you can adjust. Whereas with the moderator, I think what you do is you just, you know, you mix the moderator on the uranium. But with the control rod, you can actually move it up or down to change it. So the key thing with the control rod is you can control the rate. That's the key thing, the important thing with it. Okay, another definition. Well, you see but just where is moderator? See here, Ben. The neutron moderator is a medium, a material. Medium. Yeah, M material. Uh -huh. Whereas the control rod controls the rate, so one doesn't move and the other does move. But where is the? Oh, oh it's not on the picture because it's um, just maybe is mixed in with the. Uranium. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Just me. Okay. I don't think so. I think I think now Ben, just you can check it on Google. But I think with the with the uranium two thirty five, I think maybe it's like ninety nine percent uranium two thirty five, and then maybe one percent, I don't know, something like carbon. Uh, and it's mixed together so it can uh, have a more gentle release of energy. Mm -hmm. But I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to check Google. Give us Google there. Let me check something, please. No. No? I hope. Wait a minute. Who are you talking to? No, I'm... Um, I'll talk to them. No, I'm... It's like, this is Gao's teacher. How are you? Checking I don't um, speak Chinese. Do you speak English? Thank you. Uh, Is it in English? Yeah. I want to look up moderator for Ben. So, Ben, um, not every reactor
manufacturer uses a moderator, but most of them do. And the most common material to use as a moderator is water. So you just put the uranium in some water. Uh, and this is the most common moderator, it would seem. I think, I, I think it said 75%. Yes, 75% use water and only 20% use carbon. So that's surprising. So can you see here, if you guys can, can look. So uh, this is the uh, uranium and it releases the neutrons. But uh, uh, when the slow neutron hits the uranium, it releases fast neutrons. But you would like them to be slow. So where the moderator, you can't really see it on the picture. Ugh. The moderator is outside the uranium. So in that picture there, it's like this. There's the uranium. There's the moderator. There's the uranium. You know, there's the moderator. It's really, really the only the water. Most common, it said, is seventy-five percent is a uh, water. So in this last picture here, in the reactor, I don't know if you saw, but it says here you can use sodium or water. Uh, but I I hear about this is if we use water, uh, you. Spell. B -O -B -B -L. Oh, bubble. <laughs> bubble. Oh, you're saying if you use water, you might make a bubble. Because very fast. Yeah, and is this bad? I guess so. Yeah, you will start the nuke. Mmm, mmm. Good, interesting. So air bubbles might be a problem. Well, you see, most. They, they say uh, uh, they use the. Heavy water, yes, correct. So, hmm, most most nuclear power plants are old. So maybe seventy five percent use water because seventy five percent of them are old. Maybe I don't know. Uh, I hope maybe the newer ones use maybe sodium. Um. I think most nuclear power plants were built, I feel like most of them were built in 1980s, so, so 1990s. So the mountain, mountain Soviet is moderate. A moderator? Is sodium? Maybe it is. But when I was looking up the list of moderators, they were saying things like, Oh, let me check again. <laughs> Is sodium a moderator? Let me check. Maybe it is, Ben. Maybe it is. I thought it was just for the heat. Does sodium have other uh, function? Maybe it does. So they use the control road and moderator together? 
Not always, sometimes only the control rod and there's no moderator. Sometimes there's no moderator and only the control rod. These are called fast reactors. Let me see. Sodium is a very bad moderator. It does not absorb neutrons well. So it's a moderator, but a very bad one. It, uh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't act like a good moderator. Yeah, so, uh, yes, to answer your question, Ben, and um, Go, in this picture here, uh, there is no moderator used in this reactor. So this is what's called a fast reactor. The sodium here is a bad moderator, so it doesn't really work like a moderator. Okay. Uh, maybe I could find a picture of one that does use a moderator. I think perhaps one that does use a moderator maybe just uses water as the moderator. Yeah. Okay. I might have to research this more, it's interesting. Right, what do we do? We did moderator, we did control rod. Okay. So the last thing, fusion. Yeah, and I'm just checking something here, got the picture. Right, so we talked a lot about fission. Now, to talk about the other half, fusion. Now, fusion is like the opposite. You take two isotopes and you stick them together to make one isotope. Whereas with fission, you have two, you have one isotope and you split it into two. Here you have two and you combine it into one. Here's an example, a, a simple example. Uh, this is deuterium. Do you know what deuterium is? No. It's H2, hydrogen 2. H yeah. Hydrogen. hydrogen two, yeah. Oh, you mean two in here? Yeah. Oh, in the Ooh. left corner? Yeah. Also, it's S, S top. Oh, uh, okay. That's, uh, that's deuterium. Yeah. Hydrogen two. And that's tritinium? Hydrogen three? Yeah, hydrogen three. Okay. okay. So, what you do is you smash them together, crash them together, and you get helium-4 and a neutron. But if you calculate the mass here, it will be less than the mass here. So the result is you get some energy. So it's really similar. Could you draw this picture? Okay, so the definition, what do you think the definition is? You could guess it. Nuclear fusion is the process of making a single heavy nucleus from two lighter nuclei. So you have two small nuclei and you combine them to make one heavy nuclei. Yeah? This process is, uh, is called a nuclear reaction. It releases a large amount of energy. Okay. Cool. We have one, two, 
through. Lots of definitions today. It is. And we can boiling water again. Yep. I'll show you how now. That is very funny. <laughs> you think it's funny? Okay. Okay. So, sorry, that picture is a little bit small, um, but I'll try and explain how this works. So, um, Inside here, yeah, yeah, and I'll explain now. Here you have your deuterium. Now, okay, um, so you have your, in, in my example, we just have H2, okay? So I think, um, yeah, here's H2, and you, so it's hydrogen gas, okay? Uh, the hydrogen gas is pumped into the center here. So you see here DT, okay? Uh, then what you do, so I'll try and draw it too. Here you have H2. Then what you do is you heat it. You heat it. Usually with like uh, a laser, you know, like you, you know, a laser, you, so you heat it up. And then what happens is the H2 starts to move really fast. And if it gets hot enough, what you can do is have the H2, sorry, I should really write the two, it's not there, it's up the top. The H2 can hit with another H2 and it can make uh, your helium. No neutron, just helium, plus energy. Okay, so what will happen is this H2 will turn into helium. And then you see here, you take the helium, uh, oh, no, that's not right. I think this is a different one. Helium goes in. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's right. Neutron, lithium. Helium goes out. Oh, yeah. I have to stand up and look closer. Right, so hydrogen goes in. Then you make the hydrogen hot. And the hydrogen turns into helium and maybe uh, some hydrogen didn't turn. So it's a mixture of two, okay? So then it comes out, and what you do here is, uh, oh, you try and, uh, my goodness, you try and separate it. You keep the helium, take it out, see here? But keep any, any hydrogen that didn't change into helium, you put it back in. Do you get what I'm saying? So anyways, what you want here is just hydrogen, and when it turns into helium, you try and take the helium out. Yeah? Uh, what is this lithium? This lithium is like the sodium. 
what happens is when this gets hot, it makes the lithium hot. And this lithium then makes the, the water hot. And you see, it's the same as the other picture. You can have your generator here to make electricity. So the cold water goes in, it becomes hot, the hot water comes out, and then it cools in the condenser, the coil, and goes back to being cold. Okay. So in this picture here, um, the lithium is like the sodium. The uranium is like the hydrogen. However, the hydrogen becomes helium, so you need to take the helium out. So you, you just keep hydrogen here. So once the arrow is goes goes up, no, the that's one beside T plus helium. Oh, this one. No, right. I, this one. Yeah. What's the arrow is? I think this is. Um, I think see the deuterium. Any deuterium that you have left, you put it back in. I think. I think. Uh, what you want to do is just try and take the helium out, put them in helium tanks. So what is the T? T plus helium. I don't know. I don't know if that was meant to be DT uh -huh. for deuterium. Because I don't think T is any element, is it? Mm, no. I don't think so. Check. Uh, Oh, maybe. Go. I don't know. Maybe T is hydrogen tree. I don't know. I'm not sure. The problem is uh, these here, they don't exist. Yes, uh, okay. It's only an idea. All the nuclear power plants are the other kind. Okay. So, uh, I've bad news. 100% of nuclear power plants are fission, and 0% are fusion. Yeah. Now, this is a problem. Well, we, we couldn't control this. Yeah, yeah, because what happens is here is very difficult to keep this process going. You see, the difference is we don't have control load or something. Yeah, you can turn the control because there's no chain reaction. You have to keep heating this up. Uh, so what happens is you have your H two or what? Sorry, not your H two. Uh, your H two. Your H2, like this, and you heat it up, and you turn it into helium, and you want to try and take the helium out, and then keep the hydrogen here, and keep it turning into helium, and this will get very hot, and make lots of heat. And the heat that comes out, this will be more than the heat that goes in. But trying to keep this process going is very difficult. I think... I think the most you can keep this going today is like about uh, 10 seconds and then it stops. So this is no good. You need to keep it going maybe like 10 years, not 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. You know? So what is really, really good about this, what's really, really good is it's 100% 100% clean. There's no uranium. There's no plutonium. The only thing you're using is hydrogen. Is hydrogen clean? Yeah. And what comes out at the end? Helium. Is helium clean? Yeah. Is there any nuclear waste? No, this is just hydrogen. Hydrogen, hydrogen, helium. What do you do with helium? You put them in children's balloons or <laughs> parties, yeah? So it's 100% clean, it's 100% safe, but it's 100% difficult because the process is very hard to keep going. So these don't really exist in real life. Uh, the power plant, 
They don't really exist. It's only uh, an idea. Maybe in 50 years. Okay. Maybe. In Japan and Europe, they're working together on building one of these. Um, Europe, EU and Japan have a project where they're trying to build one of these plants. So if they have this and if something happens, it won't like Correct. Be disaster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there's no chain reaction. Uh, it's the opposite, Gao. If there was a disaster, it would just stop. Okay. So you can see why if you can build this, it's really good. Mm -hmm. like these. Kind of like this, perpetual motion. Yeah, kind of. But <laughs> it's not quite because you still need to put in deuterium. Yeah. But where can you get deuterium from? <laughs> so I think what you can do is... Uh, you know this from chemistry. You can have H2O and you can separate it yeah. into oxygen and hydrogen. Then you can take the hydrogen and put it into the, uh, the, the fission. And then out comes helium and energy. You know? Look, no uranium, no plutonium, no CO2. I think that's amazing. Yeah, but not true. Not yet. Like I said, uh, I would say, what year is this? 2019? Yeah, let's add 50 years. We'll say 2069, maybe. Maybe. How old will you be then? <laughs> 69? Plus 50? Uh, 70. 70, Ben? Yeah. yeah. 70 as well, Khalifa? 68. 68, okay, so, you know, maybe you'll see it one day. <laughs> maybe. Oh, so I forgot to say, this process of turning hydrogen into helium and making energy, there's somewhere this happens naturally. There is a place where this happens naturally. Hydrogen turns into helium and makes energy. Does anyone know where this happens naturally? Where? Ah, where? No, no. It's an ocean, right? No, naturally. No. No, 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 no. No, I just no. translate. Translate what? Naturally. Natural. What okay. can Natural. Natural. Ah, you know natural. N a t u r a l. Natural. Yeah. yeah. Where does this happen in nature, naturally? I, I say... Do you know where? No, I think you do. Guys, what's the point? No. Okay. I'll tell you. Sir? Where? Uh, I don't know. Okay, look, 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 look. Look! This is where it happens. So... so the sun is made of hydrogen and it's also made of helium. So what happens is, maybe it's like, you know, I don't know what it is, I'll have to look it up, 90% hydrogen and 10% helium. So what happens is, uh, the gravity, you know gravity of course, it pulls the sun together. And as it pulls it together, the hydrogen sticks together and becomes helium. And then what happens? Well, then it releases energy. And you feel this energy. But how do you know what it is that made of? Um, you can use the... Do you remember when we did the um, um, spectrometer? The, um, do you remember when we did the prism and you shine the light through it and you have the image of the spectral lines? Do you remember this? The absorption spectra. So what you can do is you can do the same thing with the sun. You can take the sun, you can put it through a prism, you can make a spectra. You see that there's two lines here and this means you, uh, you can work out that it's hydrogen and helium by looking at the light. 
Anyways, so what happens is this. I'll try and draw it for you. You have your hydrogen. Then the gravity pulls it in and it gets smaller. But then what happens? Well, the hydrogen sticks together and makes helium. The helium makes energy as well. So now you have not just hydrogen, but now you have hydrogen and helium. And heat. What's the form of uh, energy? What's the form of energy? It's heat. What happens when something gets hot? If something gets hot, it expands. So, then this expands again. And then it cools. So, it's kind of like... Uh, it's kind of like fighting. The heat wants to make it go out. And then it cools. It goes back in. But then you get more energy. It expands. Then the gravity pulls it back in. So it's kind of going like this. Now what happens? What happens when it runs out of uh, hydrogen and becomes only helium? What do you think happens? Two things can happen, yeah. So then, come on, two things can happen. When there's no hydrogen left, then it's no longer hot. So the gravity wins. And the gravity starts to pull it back in. Okay? It pulls it back in and it can get really small. Or when it pulls it back in, it can get really small. But if it moves fast enough, it can go boom and then expand out. Or it can pull back in. And then it doesn't stop. And then it keeps shrinking down. And then what does it become? Then at the end it becomes a black hole. hole. Yeah. So three things can happen. It can either shrink and just become very small. Or it can shrink and then explode. So then become very big. Or it can shrink and become a little point. So either this, this, or this. And the choice depends on the mass at the start. So if the mass is big enough, it will become this. Do you know what will happen to our sun? Will it become small, big, or a point? Yeah, our sun. What will happen to it? It'll come like this. Big? Yeah. How big? Well, there's the center, and then Earth would be here. Uh, the sun will expand and take the Earth inside of it. But it is... You will... Billion? Billions, yes. 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 So, who cares? <laughs> Uh, but that's what will happen. Yeah. Yeah. It will expand and the earth will be inside the sun. So that's very big. Isn't it? Yeah. But don't worry. You will be long dead before that happens. Um, a few billion, I think. Yeah. So what's the next planet that humans can live in? I don't know, Mars might be okay, but uh, I think we'd have to go much further away. Hmm? Mars and... Venus is, is here. Venus. Earth is here. Mars is here. Venus. Mars would be the safest one. Yeah. But uh, anyways, also the the Mars further was things. Mars is Mars is after Earth. No, no, I mean further, further. Oh, after that, yeah. After Mars. Uh, after yes. Mars, uh, Jupiter. Jupiter. Yeah. Saturn. Yeah. Saturn. Okay. Yeah. Jupiter's the biggest one, and Saturn is the one with the ring. Did, did you see see the movie Chinese? Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Uh, they call kind of, I don't know. I think it's move the earth. What? Yeah. 
Yeah, but in the movie they they like the dropped her. Yeah. It's like really near the earth, and you if you stand in the land, you can see the sky is like dropped her like this big, and they just came in, came in, and nearly like they will break the earth. But someone used something like really really big pump and like push away. You it sounds like a strange movie. It was helium or something. What's this movie called? Uh, I don't know the English, but it's, you know the the famous Chinese actor was act something what? Uh, yeah, he's in this movie. Yeah, he he directed this. I think. Mm. Sounds but like a strange movie. Yeah, I after I watched, I think that's just. But something thing is excellent. And blah blah. Okay. The Wandering Earth. Wow. Okay. Maybe I'll watch that. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll download it. But you will find a lot of mistakes because you are. Ah, oh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> right. So lots of English today, I'm afraid. Um. But yeah, it's a few minutes left. All of these questions are English questions. You see, describe, 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 explain, explain, okay. explain, describe, describe. Okay, see you. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll stay for a few minutes. So, do you think Summer will watch this later? Will leave a message for him? <laughs> no, no, don't leave a message for him. No, I say in the video, in the record. Oh, I'll leave a message for him. Summer, if you watch this video, I'm very sad you're not in class. If you bring me a cappuccino, I will forgive you. 